The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Fantastic director. That mother and her little girl knew they were on camera, and yet they didn't show a sign of self-consciousness. That's Carl Duran for you. But of course, he wouldn't have been able to do anything without the camera and equipment your studio made available. Carl Duran. You know, John Bracken told me that he personally fired him off this lot. Yes. That was ten years ago. Carl still has a very vivid memory of that. You know, Mike Nichols, Norman Jewison, and John Schlesinger, all of them learned for the early Duran pictures, and, and they say as much. Miss Caldwell? Oh, Rachel, hi. Excuse me. This Excuse is me. Uh, Bob Letter, Rachel Holt. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Is Mr. Bracken in London yet? Not till the end of the week. Would you ask him about loaning me out for that English picture? I know it's a small part, but I could really make it stand out, and I do want to play it. Mm, I'll do my very best. Thank you. Mr. Letter? A man could fall in love every ten minutes around here. <laughs> uh, Bob, how long has Duran been at Synanon? A little over four years. Do you think he might be ready to come back to the business? Well, I couldn't answer that. I'd have to be up to call. Uh, well, I've just got to try and do something. He really doesn't need to be rescued. He's found a very positive life with us. Could I come down to sin and on a medium? Of course. Good. I, uh, I think it might be better all around if he doesn't know I work for Bracken. Uh, couldn't you just introduce me as the secretary from the studio? Why not? How, how's tomorrow? Good. See you then. Sylvia, I'm so glad you could make it. You wait right here. I'll uh, I'll get called. Okay. Carl, your fan club is here. My what? The secretary I told you about from Century Studios. You know, the one who got us all that camera equipment. Well, let's meet the lady. One woman fan clubs are better than no fan clubs at all. Sylvia Caldwell, Carl Duran. How, How do you do? do? Great pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, do you mind my asking, uh, what's wrong with the man on the couch? Oh, uh, he's a dope fiend. 
Dope fiend. That addict or junkie or any other avoidance. He came in this morning wanting to kick it, so we keep a couple of human beings near him. Now, Sylvia, I've got a few things to do, so if you'll excuse me, I'll see you later. Okay. Uh, would you get to sit down? Thank you. <clears throat> what what I do you do? I just love oh. you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please. Well, I was just saying I, I loved your film. I really did. Thank you. I'm interested to know whatever happened to that little girl and her mother. Alive and well and living at Simmons. Same as you are. Yes. You care about the people. I'm glad. Well, that's what making a film is all about, isn't it? <laughs> I was in correspondence uh, some time ago with a young man from NYU. He wanted to go through all my films frame by frame. Why did I use a dissolve here or a close-up there? I tried to tell him that what was more important than a beautiful composition or a, uh, an exciting optical effect was, did he care about the people? You know, did he care about the sheriff in... Uh, he who wears the star, for instance, or the newspaper man in dark country. If he did, then I had made a picture. If he didn't care, then I hadn't made one. It was as simple as that. Oh, did you get through to him? Oh, no, no. He was one of those uh, film buffs who were forever more interested in technique than in human feeling. Uh. <laughs> but he came out of it rather well. I understand he's a critic now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I... I just can't picture you as a narcotics, I mean, dope fiend. I'm not. Oh, I mean before. I never was, then or now. Oh, when Sinanon first started, it was virtually all dope fiends. But many of our residents here now are people who come to Sinanon for reasons other than dope. You name the problem, Sinanon has seen it and helped it. Alcoholics, gamblers, compulsive, people who can't relate to other people for any reason. This has become very meaningful to you, hasn't it? Well, Miss Caldwell, anything that saves a man's life should become meaningful to him. Once he gets around to the belief that his life was worth saving. Don't you think it could become too meaningful? In what sense? Couldn't it become a nice place to hide? Miss Caldwell, I'm afraid you don't have the slightest idea of what you're talking about. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm due on some maintenance detail, and I'm sure you have to get back to your job. It was very nice meeting you, and thank you for your kind words about my film. Mr. Duran, I owe you an apology. Oh, it's quite all right. No, no, it isn't. What I said was thoughtless. And the reasons for your staying here are your own business. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Well, I can't help but wonder why you care about my reasons. Well, I guess I'm just a studio brat. I was brought up in the motion picture business, and I love it. I learned to respect talent, and I respect yours. So whether it was my business or not, I guess I just couldn't help wondering why you're not using that talent. All right. I have thought of coming back, or trying to. But as soon as the thought forms... But you have something very important to contribute to the industry. You're needed. Needed? Me? Yes. I blew a picture, a big one. I lost control on the set, went up like a rocket. Bracken himself fired me off the century lot. You've probably never even met him. But let me tell you something. When Bracken fires someone, he does it with enormous definition. Hmm. Failure is what it was. If a man drinks or shoots heroin or gambles the rent, all he really wants to do is fail. Then, with failure achieved and his own opinion of himself confirmed, he can relax and wallow in it. Oh, I wanted very badly to fail. I never drank much, and uh, drugs and the rest held no interest for me, so I eliminated the middleman and went out and failed all by myself. I was as addicted to failure as that man you saw on the couch. 
All those pictures you directed, they weren't failures. They're having a Carl Duran Film Festival at the Academy Theater right now. Have you been there? No, I... No. I don't imagine you're aware I was almost fired off the last two of those pictures. Bert Trapnell was my agent at the time. He did a marvelous job of covering tracks. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Dessert? I love it. Two pistachios. The special. Bert Trapnell's very big now. Why don't you phone him? Strange. What? I never talked to anyone about this. Thanks. I showed my appreciation for Bert by dismissing him as my agent. Six months or so after Bracken fired me. I wanted to go it alone. Straight down. There must have been a reason. A $50 an hour psychiatric reason? Sure. Father was a failure, so you follow in his footsteps. Or mother rejects you, so you feel unworthy of success. Won't you sit down? No, none of that kind of knowledge helps you on a given Tuesday. Uh -uh. What happened after you got fired? Oh, a year in glorious coasting seclusion in my penthouse at the Chateau Marmont. Waiting for the phone to ring, but it never did. The word that I was troubled had gotten around, so my second wife left me. Then the penthouse got too expensive, then there were a couple of apartments in West Hollywood, and then finally, a little $9 a week furnished room, right here in Venice. You know, even when I was living at the Marmont, I'd come here for the fish sandwiches and the special. They're good. I'm glad you're not an actress. Huh? Hmm. Calories. Oh. oh, yes. My second wife was an actress. Mm. I think back on it now as three years of cottage cheese. <laughs> what happens now, Carl? Oh, you mean about my going back into the industry? Mm -hmm. You're pressing. Am I? One thing about this embrace of failure, it was never totally complete. I wouldn't allow it to be, and I'm proud of it. I have a daughter. Her husband is a stockbroker. They live in Denver. It's a good marriage. She called many times, wanting me to come and live with her. Now that, I won't do. You won't have to. You sound so sure of that. I am. You just made a fine picture and an honest one. And you belong back in the business. And you've got ice cream on your chin. Oh. <laughs> pressure stand that kind of enthusiasm well what do you want me to do call the academy and tell them to postpone the oscar nomination okay the man made a good film he made a fine film so what was it 15 minutes 14 minutes and 31 seconds mm -hmm. but what about carl duran what about him okay so he was one of the one of the great ones but he hasn't handled a major project in years face it you mean what's he done for us lately all right. So it's a shame. But there's nothing I can do about it, right? Kevin, what about Big Sur? Well, what about it? Uh, I heard that you might need some additional close-ups. Is that true? Well, I don't know that for sure until this afternoon when I run a rough assembly of the cut film. Oh, well, uh, you'll be much too busy with pre-production on your next feature to direct them, won't you? 
Yeah. Well, if you do need the close-ups, couldn't Carl Duran do them? Carl Duran shoot a television pilot? No, I don't think he'd do it. I do. Well, I'm just guessing, of course, but uh, if he would do them, and if you do need them, well, it wouldn't mean a great big deal to you, but it might mean a world to him. Well, let me give you the great cop-out answer. We'll see. Okay. May I uh, come up here next weekend and see you? That's up to you, Fred. Let's back that up and take another look. Every east must have. Is Nick Luke's Henry from? I I am. Uh, may I uh, come up here next weekend and see you? That's up to you, Fred. We are in trouble. Thought we could do it with just the master shot. So did I. But without the close-ups, we're losing human values, emotion. No doubt about it. We need the close-ups. All right, Pat. Thank you very much. Anyone for coffee? The magic word. Bernie, you take his black. All right. Kevin? Oh, thank you, love. Uh, we, uh, we shoot? Yeah, a couple of close-ups of you. Yeah. Gee, that's a shame. Now, we figured you'd cry some. At the, uh, risk of displaying a little vanity. An actress with a little vanity? <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. Hear me out. I would like a close-up someday that pulled people straight out of their seats like it happened to me last night. I was at the Academy for a Carl Duran retrospective. Who took you? Sylvia Caldwell? No, why? Forget it. Anyway, Duran cut from a long shot of a Western Mesa. To suddenly smash cut a big close-up of a heavy staring right into the lens. Right, fantastic. It's a classic. I've forgotten all about it. Now, he taught us all, didn't he, Bernie? Yep. So, can we use Bracken's office for a minute, please? Is it that serious? Uh, Millie, I'll be inside. All right, Sal. Your boy's got a shot at it if he wants it. My boy. Now, I do need added close-ups on the pilot. I need somebody to shoot them. But, uh, well, first of all, tell me, why Carl Duran? Uh, just a minute. Let's go back to that uh, my boy line. Uh, why don't you tell me precisely what you mean by that? You're an attractive woman, single. I hear tell Carl Duran is an attractive man, also single. I have to wonder if you're getting emotionally involved with him. And don't forget, we're in a business where our loyalty is to the project, always. And not to any of the individuals involved. You know that as well as I do. No, I don't know that as well as you do, Kevin. I, I know that better than you do. I've been in the business longer than you have. And believe me, I do know the difference between personal involvement and professional commitment. I was brought up with it. Every time I get interested in a man because of his ability, someone regards it as personal. Now, I can't prove to you that this isn't. And I don't intend to try. But you like the man. Yes. Yes, I do like him. But that's beside the point. Is it? You see, the real point is, Kevin, that I admire his talent. As a matter of fact, I think I ought to tell you. I admire it so much. I think he's the man who should direct your next feature. I've sent his Synanon film to Mr. Bracken with that recommendation. Look, lady. A Captain from Texas is an eight million dollar film. My very first big one. Now, when Bracken gets to London, he opens negotiations with John Houston to direct it. I do not want those negotiations muddied. Now, you stay the hell out of this. I'm sorry, Kevin, but I'm already in it.
sore plebi synanon gay. And a strange thing happens. The addict learns that it's more fun being conscious. And you're not really listening to me, are you? I'm sorry. What's the matter? Well, it's just that uh, there's something I've got to tell you, and I was waiting for the right moment. Whatever it is, let it wait another moment. There's a, an anticipation in you, uh, a very special quality. It's marvelous. Carl, please listen to me. Miss Caldwell, excuse me. Uh, oh, hello, Rachel. I'm sorry to bother you again, but... Oh, Rachel Holt, Carl Duran. How do you do? Very nice to meet you. I still haven't heard anything about the loan out, and I know you and Mr. Bracken talk almost every day, wherever he is. I'm working on it, Rachel. Oh, thank you. Hey, I really appreciate that. It was very nice meeting you, Mr. Duran. So? You're something more than just a secretary at the studio. I'm sorry, that's what I've been trying to tell you. I work for Mr. Brackett. Oh, how nice for you. Carl, we've made a pilot for a new television series. And they need some added close-ups. And I've arranged for you to do them. It's a chance for you to direct major studio film again. These last few days have been an audition, haven't they? Oh, no, Carl. You make me feel like the starlet who, on arising from the producer's couch, asks if she got the part. Good morning, Sylvia. Hi. About tonight. Oh, what about tonight? Oh, at the workshop. Tom Hudson and Paulette Douglas are doing some scenes from Requiem for Heavyweight. You'll be there, of course. Now, why will I be there, of course? Oh, well, honey, why does everybody automatically assume that I'm available 24 hours a day? Uh, what's with you? I'm awfully tired of these little things that keep coming up almost every night. I, I do have some life of my own outside this place, you know. Yes. Uh, Mr. Duran to see you, Miss Caldwell. Send him in, please. Right. Okay, Mr. Duran. Do you know where Mr. Bracken's office is? Yes. It shouldn't be too difficult to understand, Sylvia. Pride is a fine thing for a man to have. But then so is ambition, isn't it? Then you'll do the close-ups. <sighs> if they're still available, yes. Yes, they are. This is the final shooting script. Uh, the close-ups are noted there in the first act. Mm -hmm. After you've finished reading it, I'll set up a meeting with Kevin Grant, the producer. Television. 72 pages. Well, it will take me about an hour to read it. You can read it right here if you like. I'd rather not if you don't mind. Carl Durand is here. Oh, could you ask him to wait for a minute, please? Carl Durand's here. You too? Why is it every time I hear that name, I get this feeling I should genuflect? Are you going to use him on the feature? I mean, is he going to direct the captain from Texas? Why? One of the stuntmen on my crew once mentioned how rough he was to work for. If I'm going to gap the stunts on the picture, I'm going to have to have full authority in my area. Well, he's not doing the feature, Davy. He's just shooting some retakes on a television pilot. Why don't you run down and make up and see what you look like in Dark Hill, okay? I look great. Could you ask Mr. Duran to come in, Mitch? Hello? Mr. Duran. I'm Kevin Grant. How do you do? He has a good face. Yes, he does. Sit down, please. Thank you. He's my stunt gaffer. Double for Jason Robards in a movie I'm doing about Lee McNelly. The Texas Ranger captain. Yeah, you uh, know McNelly's story? I always thought it would make a fine western, and uh, Robards is right to play him. I thought so. You must have had pressure to use a more conventional western hero. Yes, I did. Mr. Grant, I have to tell you that I read this script with... Um, well, with some degree of suspicion. It's a good deal better than I ever thought a television pilot could be. Thank you very much. Do you mind my asking you why I am here? No, but isn't there uh, another point? Perhaps even a bigger one? 
What's that? If I did mind your being here, you wouldn't be. What do you think of punching up the ending with close-ups? Oh, I think it's very good. Shouldn't be any problem. Good. And I'll screen a rough cut for you. We can go over to the looping stage. I want you to meet Diane Wigg, who plays the part of Amy. She's re-recording some of her exterior lines with a lot of airplane noise. It's finished. It's finished like I never thought it could be. I don't need him anymore. It's finished. It's like I never thought it could be. I don't need him anymore. Okay. Bernie? Put us on the headset. It'll be a take. It's finished. Finished, could I... Sorry. It's finished. Finished like I never thought it could be. I don't need him anymore. Okay. That should do it. Thank you. Um, a suggestion? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Miss Waring, it occurs to me that there might be something in the attitude here that could help us. Uh, do you mind? Oh, not at all. Well, now, here we are at the end of the story. As Amy, you've had to reach a decision as to whether or not to join this big sir community, and it wasn't easy. You had to reject Fred and the whole sort of, oh, plastic world he represented. You didn't do it out of desperation or need or because you were running away from anything. You did it because you felt honestly that you wanted to. Is this correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the way you are reading the line now, there is a certain, um, oh, matter-of-fact quality in it, almost as if it weren't really all that important. Miss Waring, it is important. And there is time for an almost joyous uh, realization of independence there. Now, wouldn't that be of value? You mean, uh, it's finished. Finished like I never thought it could be. I don't need him anymore. Well, you're right, Mr. Duran. But Kevin, it's better. I you bet it's better. Let's go again, Bernie. Uh, let's have the last loop again. It'll be a take. It's finished. Finished like I never thought it could be. I don't need him anymore. Yeah. Fine. Thank you. That was very good, Miss Waring. Thank you. We'll continue the same attitude when we shoot the close-ups. Uh, which leads me to another thought. Uh, do you mind? No. No, go right. Well, now, here again, it has to do with attitude and a strength for Amy. Uh, that's uh, scene 37. As it stands now, Fred asks her if he can come on the following weekend to see her. She says that uh, it's up to him whether or not he wants to. Is this correct? Yeah, that's right. The man is amazing. He has read the script once, seen a rough cut, and he even remembers the scene number. Well, I it's correct, but is it right? Is it right? If by changing a couple of lines, she rejects Fred totally, there in the first act, doesn't that make her stronger? And more honest, more sympathetic. What would have to be done, Carl? Well, very little, actually. It would mean restaging and shooting scene 37 and changing those few lines of dialogue. We would have been on that set anyway if we had shot the close-ups. He's right, Sue. So. Uh, how long will you need in the set? Oh, uh, half a day. Kevin, this is marvelous. Please. All right. It's good. Real good. Hello. Hello. I hope you don't mind my dropping in like this, but I brought you something. Thank you very much. I, uh... Come in, please, will you? Hello. Oh, hello, dear. How are the kids? Good, good. Yes, I, I moved out this morning. It looks like I'm going to be working at a studio again. 
At least a little. Because I want to. Claudia. Claudia, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I will not go to Denver. No, I, I can't. I can't, I'm sorry. Goodbye, Claudia. My daughter. She upset you. <sighs> well, she doesn't want me to do this. She wants me to move to Denver and forget all about it. I think I told you I have the penthouse here once. Well, this is only a single room. But it's my address again. And I'm not going to I'm not going to walk out on it. You won't have to. I just spoke to Mr. Bracken, and he okayed your added scenes. And he asked me to personally wish you good luck. The champagne is from him. talked about the captain from Texas also. And you're being very seriously considered as the director. I wanted to kiss you. I'm not sure if it's because you are you, or if it's because of what you've done for me and what you can do. If you want to kiss me, I couldn't care less about the reasons. Stone Rose picture with you. Of course, I remember, Casey. Have you been? Real good, thanks. Oh, I'm so glad. Good to see you back. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. I'm delighted to see you. Come on, let's meet the rest of your crew. This is Sour Deal. He's your sound man. How are you? Hi, Hi. Carl. Hi. Glad to see you. Thank you. And over here at the coffee table, you've got Nate Morrow, your cameraman. Nate? My pleasure. Thank you. And Jim Seymour, your sometime well, operator. I'm delighted, Jim. And this is Bobby Jason, your first assistant. Bobby. Nice to see you. Thank you. Carl Duran. I thought he was dead. I was. <laughs> Come on. Let's take a look at your uh, at your set. Well, this is it. It's all yours. I have to go back to the office. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, right, boys. Let's hold the talk. Care to use this, Mr. Duran? Ah, oh, thank you, Nate. Will you put a 50 on it, please? Sure. There you go. Mm, thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Duran. This is Raj Haynes, is playing Fred. Well, of course, Mr. Haynes. I like your work in the pilot very much. Thank you, Mr. Duran. I uh, want you to know that I consider it an honor to be working with you. 
Hang it, Skip. Put on a Kugelorus to break up that back wall, will you, Lou? That'll do it. All right, gentlemen, now. Goodbye, boys. Let's hold the talk. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, we have a four-hour call. Post time for the first race at Hollywood is 1.20. I consider it my duty as a California taxpayer to see to it that you're all there on time, all right? <laughs> yes. Ms. Waring, will you come here, please? Diane, please. I'd like to walk you through it once, just for marks, huh? We'll take our time and make it as easy on ourselves as we can. Now, will you go on to the top of the stairs, please? Now, this is our first position. The bottom line should be just below the handrail. Hmm? Right. Uh, Ms. Waring, will you come downstairs, please? And stop there for a moment, please. Mark her there. Hmm? Thank you. Now, will you cross over to the window and stop there for a second? No, a little bit forward. Uh, uh, no, that's too much. That's it. Right there. Mark it, please. Now, you see what I'm trying to train? Yes, huh? yes, yes. Thank you. Now, cross over to the couch, please. And stop there. Stop it. Mark it again, please. All the time looking here at... Uh, Mr. Hanks, will you come? All the time looking at Fred, huh? Now, finally, you make a direct cross over here. Go on. One, two, there, and we'll hold the uh, two shot, you see. I think it's a little too tight for a two shot, Mr. Duran. Well, that's good. That's the way I want it. Okay. Oh, yes. Mark them both. Very good. All right, let's run through it one more time. All right, quiet for complete rehearsal. All right. Hi. Uh, looks like he's done his homework. <laughs> of course he has. Are you comfortable? Do you want a chair? Oh, no, it's fine, Bobby. I'll stay right here, thanks. Ah, uh, good. Let's lock them up, boys. Are you ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any problems? No. You look very pretty. Huh. All right, take your position, please. Uh, Bobby, let's have it a little more quiet, huh? Okay, hold it down, boys. This is a rehearsal. Mr. Haynes, we'll start with your line. All right? And action. I'll be back here next weekend. Now you're down the stairs. Stop. Yeah, stop right there. Go up. Now, cross over to the window. You're going to stop there for a couple of beats, huh? Right. Good. Now to the couch. Now, to Fred. Resolution. I can't hold it. It's too tight. Your marks, Miss Waring. Those marks are very critical, dear. Let's be aware of them, huh? I'm sorry. All right, let's go on. Let's go on. No, Fred. I don't want to see you again. Hold it for a couple of beats, then cut right there. Make a note for the editor. Right here, we go to a reverse shot over the shoulder for Fred's reaction, all right? Can we make a picture? That's what we're here for. Okay, boys, let's go from the top. Make up, check them out. This will be a take. Bobby. Settle down, boys. This is a picture. Roll them. Scene R37, take one. Speed. I'll be back here next weekend.
What is it? Dr. Mark. Miss Waring. Your marks. Once again. Once again. Let's go from the top. Make up. Quickly, please, Diane. Once again, please. This will be a take. Scene R37, take two, speed. Action. I'll be back here next weekend. You were looking down for your marks. I, I'm sorry. I should think it would be. Mr. Duran, we could loosen this and make it easier for her. If I had wanted a loose shot, I would have designed it that way, wouldn't I? Yes, sir. Once again, please, from the top. Let's go from the top. Scene R37, take three. Cut, cut. Once again. Take four. Cut. Take five. Cut, cut. Congratulations, Miss Waring. You didn't look down at your marks that time. You slowed down a step just before you got there, which accomplishes the same thing. Don't do it again. Miss Waring, try to remember that as a professional motion picture actress, there are certain turns to be made and certain floor marks to be hit to accommodate the camera. Miss Waring, I understand they have an acting school here now. Surely they must have taught you that. Again, Miss Mary. And again. And again. And again after that until we do it right. <laughs> Duran, we're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens. Now, if we want to spread out to say a 35, we might be. You stay the hell out of this. I'll do just that. All right, Mr. Haynes. Read the line again, please. I'll be back here next weekend. Mr. Grand Bobby, we're in trouble. We need you on the set right now. I don't want to see you again. Why so quiet? This is some kind of a secret. No, I... Well, I just thought she didn't want to hurt him. You don't. You think Amy is the kind of girl who can reject a man, who can do anything in the world to him. But as long as she can say to herself, I didn't mean to hurt him, then she can pat herself on the back and be secure in her nobility. She gives him back his fraternity pin and suddenly all his peaches and cream in her life again. Is that what you think Amy is? No. Well, then perhaps you'll tell us what she is then. Well, she's not that selfish. Selfish? Well, immature. She has a, a concern for Fred. That's all I'm trying to show. But it's not what I want to see. Miss Waring, we are going to try another take. And we are going to get rid of this notion of Amy's being gentle with Fred. Hmm? I'll try. I'm not asking you to try, Miss Waring. I'm asking you to do it. To get mad at the man, because women reject men out of anger. Not anger at the men. No, 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 no. Anger at themselves. For their inability to accept what the man has to offer. But I don't believe that of Amy. Then try believing it of yourself. You are a woman, aren't you? Well, aren't you? Miss Waring, it's a yes or no question. What are you doing here? Who called you? I didn't know I had to be called to visit my own set, Mr. Duran. When I am working, it is my set. Oh, come, let's have some coffee. Coffee, Sylvia, I'm merely trying to make this into a real and truthful scene, yes. and there is no reason in the world to accept anything less. Yeah, no, Carl, no, come, let's have coffee, please. This is not directorial temperament, you know. It's something else. What do you mean, something else? You called it yourself, Carl. The need to fail. The need to prove yourself unworthy of success. That's what you're doing right now. You're destroying yourself and you don't even know it. 
You've been through so much and you've come so far. Oh, please don't let it happen, Carl. Don't let it happen, please. You're making something out of nothing. Oh. All right, let's go, let's go. Let's make a movie. Settle down, boys. Miss Waring? Yes, I'm ready. Now, let me explain. As a director, I give 100%. I expect the same from those I direct. I've been called a perfectionist. It's as apt a description as any. I haven't worked for a good director who wasn't. Thank you. I am also a totally emotional man. As an emotional man, I observe emotion in others. I am asking you to portray an emotion I have observed in women. To show a little anger at yourself. Now, that shouldn't be too difficult. I don't know, Mr. Duran. Maybe uh, I don't have the skills. No, I'm not talking about skills. I'm talking about a simple willingness to cooperate. You didn't want to hit your floor marks, so you didn't hit them. Well, that's not true. Not trusting my interpretation of the part, you simply balked. Which is very clever, which is very feminine, but which is not acting. Do you want me to play Amy as, as mean and vicious? I just don't see her that way. But you are going to act her that way. And you are going to act for me this morning, aren't you? Or would you rather go to the still department? I'm sure a few provocative bikini shots wouldn't put too much of a strain on you. Oh, don't bore me with tears, Miss Waring. I am interested in portraying a woman. Not a little girl. Could it be that what I want from Amy is not that far from what you are yourself? Could it be that the cold, brutal, eviscerating quality I want from Amy is not that far from Diane Waring, but too close? That's all right. <laughs> That's enough. I'm wrapping the set now. Apology is meaningless, I know. But don't make one, please. It may be me, maybe the surroundings, I don't know. Maybe I haven't learned enough yet, so uh, I'm going back to Sinanon and learn some more. And someday, somewhere, somehow, I'll make another picture. Send me a print of it, Carl. 